life sciences is one of the hottest building types in demand at the moment. Cushman and Wakefield estimates that at $90 billion in investment capital will be pumped into the sector this year. And JLL states that as of the second quarter of 2021, nearly 22 million square feet of lab space were under construction in the United States. However, this typology presents some unique construction and adaptive reuse challenges. Joining us to discuss some of these is Paul Ferro, co-founder and principal with Form 4 Architecture in San Francisco, whose portfolio includes several life science projects. Welcome, Paul. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Well, let's start off. I'd like to get your, your observation about what's driving demand for life science space these days. Well, I think there's a, I mean, there's a couple of things going on. Of course, you know, the Bay Area is, um, you know, got the human capital in terms of, you know, Stanford, Berkeley, UC, San Francisco, providing the talent that's needed for the industry. And then, of course, you've got the venture capital uh, in the area that's bringing in the money for it. Um, and then, you know, our barrier connection with the Pacific Rim also brings in desirable destination for life science researchers, you know, from around the world. But what's going on as well, just in the sort of local market and sort of post-COVID stuff is, you know, you, you've, um, with the hybrid working models that went on with the tech companies and the financial companies, you couldn't uh, do that with the life science companies. You know, researchers mm -hmm. need to be in their spaces. They need to be in their labs. They need to be... Uh, in the office. So what you're seeing is developers are kind of pivoting, trying to fill up the space that maybe was lost a little bit with, with office um, tech financial sectors not being in the office as much. So, you know, developers are pivoting, trying to find alternative uh, tenants and life science is a perfect one for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is, uh, do you see this going beyond San Francisco? I mean, and uh, is it pretty much the same in other markets that you're operating in? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're primarily in the Bay Area right now mm -hmm. for most of our projects, um, but just in talking to others, I mean, you're seeing a lot of different uh, life science hubs popping up all over the country. I mean, there's just a huge demand in general because the industry is in such demand, you know, in terms of, um, you know, it's not just about COVID, it's about solving, you know, disease issues and, and finding medicines and medical devices all the time for health, different health issues. So the, the industry in general is just growing like crazy. Um, mm. Yeah. Precision Series architectural wall panels provide design flexibility by combining bold visual effects with easy, cost-effective installation. There are 12 rib patterns to choose from, including the HWP, Highline, and box rib panels. All can be installed both horizontally and vertically. Panels may be specified as perforated aluminum for screen applications, ventilation, or adding a textured layer to your project. Consider a Precision Series wall panel system for your next project. For more information, visit packclad.com or call 800-PACKCLAD. When you're working on a life science project, what are some of the considerations that you need to take into account? Well, you know, like the tech companies or the financial companies, there's the life science, you know, companies have the same needs in terms of, you know, their, their, their business with employees and staff, and they have the same needs for access to public transit that any other company would have. Um, the people want amenities, whether they're in the local area or in the buildings themselves. Um, you know, they need collaborative workplaces to, to foster innovation, just like any other tech company as well. And and then of course, you know, the home away from home environment, you know, to attract and retain employees is just, is just as important as in the other businesses. So, um, you know, you don't see generally a big difference. Now there's infrastructure differences with buildings that we can talk about, but in terms of people, people are people, they, they have the same needs, whether they're a life science scientist or a, a tech developer, you know? So uh, fortunately for us, we're kind of in both worlds. And so we, that's sort of how we got into life science work was through our workplace expertise first. Oh. And then, um, you know, taking that and applying it to biotech projects and then learning, getting the expertise for biotech itself. We, we now see the crossover because all these bio co biotech companies have the same need for workplace as anybody else does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, I hope this doesn't sound like a stupid question, but does life sciences have its own zoning requirements? And if you want to put that type of, operation on, on, on a site? 
Yeah, you. So you know, you're you're limited by height uh, with biotech because if you're going to bring, you can't bring hazardous materials up a certain amount of height above the ground. Oh, so, okay. Mm. So you've got those kind of restrictions you have to watch out for. Um, if you've got an L occupancy for sort of high hazardous material use, you know, certain zones aren't going to necessarily allow that certain commercial districts. So you've got to take that into consideration if you're a developer or an end user developing a project. Um, and then you have on the reverse side, you'll have um, cities that are now actually doing zoning for what we call PDR, like in San Francisco, that stands for production distribution repair. And then in other in other cities, they might call it a research zone or a light industrial research zone that's actually catering towards the more R and D research type of companies that biotech can sometimes fall into. So you're getting zoning that's actually catering to some some in some cases life science projects oh. um, versus just straight up office. You know, so so yeah, there's there is zoning tied to this issue <laughs> that you need to be aware of. So, um, what are some of the must haves? when you're designing a life science uh, environment for your for clients. So I'm, I'm talking talking about when we're, um, you know, like building you know, room height, for example, or, right. or, or yeah, floor, the floor, floor to floor height is, is key. I mean, 16 foot <laughs> minimum is a starting place. You know, um, that's one of the big ones, of course, when developers or, or building owners are looking to try to move a life science company into their existing building that often is a, a restricting factor um, but the ground up stuff you know is, is easier to accommodate that so the other issues are you know um, adequate loading dock space mm. capacity uh, dedicated service elevators for you know distributing materials not just people uh, up and down in the building um, moving you know hazardous materials and that kind of stuff and waste um, Mechanical space and shaft equipment is, of course, a huge concern. You need to make sure you've got the, the depths you need to put the extra level of infrastructure in that biotech needs. Column grid spacing is a is one to take into consideration. I mean, we in a new building, you're you're usually looking at like a 33 foot ideal uh, spacing of columns in order to work with the benching that happens in the wet labs. You know, in terms mm. of the spacing between uh, the benches, the counters. Um, and then, you know, building height is, is an issue too. The taller the building, the less hazardous materials you can have up inside the upper floors. Um, so those are, those are kind of the main, the main ones. And then if you get into sort of the high hazard uh, projects or you get into the L occupancy, beyond the B occupancy, um, you're, you know, you're looking at a, a full emergency power, increased exiting, fire rated corridors that you need, um, water type floors, depending on what you're doing in, in the, some of the spaces. And then, um, like I said earlier, you may not even be allowed to build an L occupancy building in certain commercial zones in certain cities. So you got to mm -hmm. take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, flexibility is a huge one as well. Uh, you know, we're seeing there used to be kind of that, you know, previously there was a 50 50 split between lab and office space. And now you're getting, because of uh, a lot of uh, work being done on the computer, the scientists don't need to have as much necessarily as much lab space. The, the actual computer works workspace is, is becoming more important, but you want to have the flexibility to grow the lab space if they get to a point, you know, past a startup point in their in their evolution of a company. So often you'll see the lab space in the middle of the building at first, and then the, the workspace around it. And as they need to build more lab space, they can kind of push into the office areas and take over more as needed. So flexibility is a huge issue for life science companies as well, mm -hmm. as they're going through their different stages. Um, you know, we're working with a client right now where the project started out as all labs and a vivarium on the ground floor, all office on the second floor. And we're about three quarters of the way through construction for that overall project. And they just decided to add a GXP um, facility to start some light manufacturing of their, their products, which has an even more strict um, requirements for the project. And now they're trying to find, we're trying to find the space within the building to do that, you know, to, so we have to sort of take over some of the office space to, to make this happen. Mm -hmm. so, so flexibility is always a big one. You know, you mentioned that the kind of the lab office hybrid, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking to other people about this topic. I, I've learned that, you know, this kind of mixed use lab, lab uh, office, lab engineering, last computational science is pretty common. Are you finding that to be the case in the projects that you've taken on as well? Oh yeah, for, yeah, for sure. And amenities, 
are a big part of it as well. Um, what you know, would be some of the amenities that 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 you that would fit the bill here? Uh, you know, it's sort of the it's like I said earlier, it's kind of the same as the tech companies. You know, people yeah. are people. <laughs> they want they want to have access to the break rooms and the game rooms and the the, the spaces that boost morale and and uh, give them a little bit of a break from the intensity of their of their workday. Um, you know, so you need uh, you know collaborative spaces that teams can meet with, meet in, and and train and and um, cafes of course you know it's a big one whether it's in the neighborhood or you know built being built in on the site itself depending on the scale of the campus that you're in um yeah so it's it's all the kind of typical amenities that any person would would desire in mm -hmm. their work environment i find it ironic that that the coronavirus pandemic which caused the closing of so many offices has basically spurred their adaptive reuse to lab space Right. And I'm wondering, though, uh, is there how, how difficult is it to change an office, an existing office into a lab? And what are some of the things that need to be done to that in order to make that make that work? Yeah, it doesn't always it doesn't always work. You know, we've had uh, developer building owners that have asked us to do due diligence on existing buildings that they own to see if they could start enticing life science workers or life science companies. and. Um, sometimes just purely because the height's not there to fit the mechanical equipment in and you're not going to tear down the building and <laughs> you can't change the basic structure you, it just doesn't work so i mean one of the first things is do you just do you have the clearances that you need for the amount of mechanical that's going to happen do you need to upgrade upgrade the mechanical on the roof you know to to satisfy their needs and then of course that that sort of snowballs into structural upgrades to the to the roof and support the mechanical equipment if you need to um you know, you might, depending on what you're doing, you might need new elevators, like I said earlier, to, hmm. to devote to transporting materials. Um, you know, one of the projects I was talking about earlier with this GXP lab is, is causing us to have to put in a new elevator just for the delivery of materials to the specific space where the, the, the pedestrian or the passenger elevator is just not going to do it. It's not in the right spot. They don't want people, you know, interacting with the material delivery. So, um, You've got to look at whether or not you need to introduce new loading docks to the space, depending on the scale of the operation. Um, and that, of course, doesn't always work. Um, and then, I, you know, the biggest one, like I said earlier, is just floor to floor clearances for mm -hmm. mechanical and systems. And that often becomes the, the real stopper at the beginning of it mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out. So, yeah. Yeah. Lastly, um, COVID has been kind of injecting new life into the life sciences sector but you know as you mentioned earlier uh this is something that's probably has a longer runway than that i would think right yeah i don't yes i don't think this is all about COVID. i mean we we need cures medicines you know medis medical devices procedures for the countless diseases that were you know and health issues that we're all we all live with so COVID isn't the thing that most of these companies are actually dealing with but most of our companies are dealing with cancer research you know trying to find the, the cures to other bigger diseases that affect us all so mm -hmm. um yeah even after covid is gone soon that's these life science companies are going to still be going you know and, and looking for more space mm -hmm. so. well paul thanks for taking a couple of minutes to talk to us about this this is a fascinating subject and i'm sure we're going to see more of it going down the road sure i appreciate it thanks a lot and uh thanks for joining us this is john caulfield from building design and construction